Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In the corridors of history, one woman's courage changed the fate of a nation. Who is Queen Esther? Apostle Joshua Selman unravels the story behind this iconic biblical figure. Explore the journey of a humble orphan who rose to royalty and saved her people. Discover the divine purpose and destiny that Esther embraced, inspiring generations. Step into the legacy of Queen Esther and uncover the power of purpose and bravery, revealing the strength and significance of Queen Esther's story. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you this morning and we decree and declare that forever your name alone be glorified. We thank you for this opportunity again that you have provided to sit, to learn, to grow, to receive. We declare that our hearts are opened in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare again that this morning there is the hearing of faith and the working of miracles. Lord, we decree and declare that your word will come with power and it will be edifying to our spirits. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Were you blessed? Let's honor Pastor Nathaniel. Amazing, amazing man of God. God bless you, sir. Please, before you sit, would you help me again to honor the man of God, the angel over this house, and his adorable wife. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Truly honor you. Praise the Lord. I honor every, every distinguished personality in this place. May the Lord increase you in Jesus' name. Please be seated. I'll be up here only for a few minutes. But then I pray that within this time that we have together, the Lord will speak to us and the Lord will challenge us in the name of Jesus. We began to explore the book of Esther yesterday to examine the various principles that Esther engaged to rise from the backside of the mountain right to the palace and to be able to preserve God's people and um, we examined the subject of honor yesterday please I like for you to get the tapes if you were not here yesterday make an effort I believe there should be a system to access that get the teaching and listen very powerfully there are teachings that that bring very definite shift. Praise the Lord. It's not one of those things you add to your knowledge. It's a very, very important subject to understand. Psalms 103. Psalms 102 and verse 13. If it's projected, then we'll just read in concert. If you have it and you can see it, let's read together, please. One to read. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Hmm. Yea, the set time is come. One more time, if you believe this is for you, I'd like you to read it convincingly. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time. Exodus chapter 3, please, and verse 21. My God, this is for someone this morning. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. Please let's read one to read. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Who is God speaking to this morning? That I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And the proof that I gave them favor is that as they go, they will not go empty. Father, bless us this morning in the name of Jesus. Please sit. 
The Bible says the things that were written aforetime, they were for our learning, so that we through the comfort of Scripture may find hope. That means that one of the systems allocated for us is to study the dealings of God in the past. How he lifted people, how he restored people, how he opened doors, so that we can study what they did and also engage and then likewise receive the results that we so desire. This morning, very briefly, we're going to be looking at the second key that Esther engaged. The first was honor. And let me just do a quick recap. I said yesterday that the honor is the discerning the celebrating and if need be the rewarding of an individual as a measure of their usefulness in your life are we together now that honor is a key that can open any door every door closes because of dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men and dishonor to principles please pay attention this is true Everything was correct in the palace, minus dishonor. The palace was almost dividing. The chariots were still there. The wealth in the treasury were still there. The servants were still there. But one woman communicating dishonor was about to divide 127 provinces. There's no telling how far the disaster that dishonor can produce in the life of an individual. I did say yesterday that it's not enough to be gifted, to be skilled. It's not enough to have the intellectual wherewithal. It is important this is the world of men. It's not enough to honor God. You must honor men. Praise the Lord. Yes. So honor transited the young village girl called Hadassah to become queen. The second key that we see there, and we'll just build on that very briefly this morning, is favor. Please say favor. favor. One more time, say favor. favor. The number one reason people succeed in life is favor. It is true. But I want to make an adjustment very quickly this morning because I think there has been a, what I would call an observation in the way and manner favor is taught. The very definition of favor that has been communicated to people is the reason why they never experience it. Um, for starters, let me tell you, favor never happens just once. If it happens just once, it is breakthrough, not favor. Favor is predictable, repeatable, under any circumstance. Praise the Lord. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Hallelujah. The mainstream definition of favor is unmerited access. I agree, but broadly speaking, I disagree. I disagree because favor like love and wisdom has dimensions. And only one of the dimensions of favor should be seen as unmerited access. And that is favor when you are dealing with the saving grace. The saving grace that was communicated in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It is unmerited. We receive by faith. Nothing can be added. Nothing can be subtracted. I agree. But every other dimension of favor in this kingdom is merited. Please listen. It is important. The proposition that all the dimensions of favor are unmerited will leave us in utter frustration. Favor is a reaction. It can be programmed. There are exact things you do that culminates to favor. Proverbs chapter 13, please, and 15, if we have it quickly. Let's just read it. Read it with me if you're a Christian and you believe the Bible. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. One to read, please. Good understanding give it favor but the way of transgressors is hard the bible talks about two pregnant women here two pregnant women the first woman is called good understanding she is a woman and has a womb and the other woman is called transgressor also a woman that both women can give birth and that good understanding can give birth to a baby and the name of the baby is favor. 
and that transgression can also give birth to a baby and the name of the baby is hardship a transgressor is not a sinner a transgressor is not an unbeliever a transgressor is a consistent violator of God's ordinances and that can happen even if you are born again and the Bible says you will continue to program the birthing of an experience called hardship this is true spiritually this is true politically this is true intellectually and so on and so forth favor is programmable and the mother that gives birth to favor is good understanding. There is an exact belief construction that you can have. And it can birth favor in your life again and again. Praise the Lord. The Bible lets us know that when Vashti was banished, the king decided to gather all the young virgins. And the cousin of this man who sat at the gate, Mordecai, he decided to give his cousin a chance to see if per adventure the king would find interest in her. Are we still together? And then the Bible says that, hey guy, I, I'm, I'm just rushing because I don't want us to spend time looking from scripture to scripture. And Hadassah is also brought together with the virgins. The Bible says they were kept under the custody of a man called Hegai, the keeper of the king. And all the women were given everything that they wanted to adorn themselves to look as presentable as possible. And then the Bible tells us very surprisingly, if you would give us please Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. 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 The Bible tells us that now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihai, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go unto the king, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. Go on, please. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them who looked upon her. Now look at this. It looks like a charm. For as long as your eye made contact with Esther, you were compelled to favor her. It's a grace. That a village girl stands in the midst of many other people. And whoever looked at her had an interest in her. Ah! What betides a man who is alive in our day without the grace for favor? I tell you sincerely, life will be hard. Nobody loves you by default. It takes a grace to make men interested in your issue. There is a grace that can make men isolate their own concerns and zoom their interest towards you. It's a grace. People are too busy for you to attract that level of commitment from them. There is a grace that must come from heaven that can compel a man to be desired that people go out of their way as though under an influence verse 17 same Esther chapter 2 and verse 17 and the king my God loved Esther above all the women before Esther arrived he was considering others this is wonderful and when Esther showed up, the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. What was the reward? So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. The mystery, the enthroning power of favor. All through scripture we see how that man found favor with God. Was it not for 430 years the Bible records that the nation of Israel were under the captivity of the Egyptians to the point that Pharaoh would not even give them straw. And in one night, please say one night, favor has speed oh, that you can see a man today and turn and turn back and not identify the person again because the favor of God has transmitted the person. This is true. This is true. It's not just a church talk. I tell you when the grace for favor comes upon your life, you will join those clapping for you to stand in wonder and say, God, I know you can move, but what is this? 
When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, the Bible says, We were like them that dream. And so said they among the heathen, The Lord had done great things for us. I came this morning to share this scripture and to trust that God will put something upon our lives this morning. That we, when we step out of this place, you see, remember I told you yesterday that nothing comes from God to men directly. Everything comes from God through men to men. And everything leads you from Satan through men from men. Or if I would use that expression. Nothing will come from God to you directly, including salvation. It will come from God to a man, to a man. So if God says yes, and the man in the middle says yes, the answer for you will still be no. It takes both God and the man to say yes, for your destiny to say yes. Praise the Lord. Favor. Haman began to plot the, the annihilation of the Jews. And he obtained permission from the king, promising to give him some money in return. And then the report got to Esther. And Mordecai had encouraged her, stand up and go and advocate for us. But she was afraid because traditionally you would not enter into the king's inner chamber without his invitation. And if he did not lift his golden censer, the price, the penalty was death. Are we together? And now Esther was about to take, to make a very costly sacrifice. Then she says, please declare first, all of us, let me take the risk of going to the king. If I perish... I perish. And then the Bible says that Esther stands before the king. And then the king not only lifts his golden censer, but then he says, What do you desire that up to half of my kingdom I will give to you? The king was willing to divide his province into two on account of a woman who obtained favor from the Lord. Life is not hard when you have favor. Hallelujah. Eventually, she beckoned on the king to come and dine again and again and again. And then in the process of the dining, she reveals that her man is the traitor, the enemy that would want to destroy the Jews. And then, you know the story, he ends up hanging in the same gallows that he created. Notice, in the entire book of Esther, there was no record of war with the sword. Only two instruments were used to both lift people and create a system of defense. Honor and favor. It is not always about fighting with armory. Honor is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Hallelujah. You scattered here this morning, I believe, are people who desire higher levels of favor. If everyone were to write a request here, most of the requests will be favor dependent. You are trusting that God will touch the heart of a king, the heart of a noble, the heart of someone towards you. And I am telling you this. You've heard me say it again and again that everybody who blesses you has relatives who are also in need. Whatever will make him leave them and come to you must be supernatural. That a few men saw a man who was crippled and insisted that today you must be healed. And they were willing to tear the zinc and take the risk and brought a man down. It's not enough to be sincere. It's not even enough to just be godly. There is a grace for favor. The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is the willingness for men to help you. If all you have is money, you are not favored. The real proof of favor is the loyalty of men to your needs. And this morning, I believe with all my heart that it will take favor to move us from where we are to the next level. It will take favor to see the fulfillment of everything that God has said. In my life and in ministry, I have seen very gifted people because I have learned by experience that truly 
the race is not to the swift and that the battle is not to the strong that wealth is not only or always to them who are wise when God's favor comes upon you it will look unfair but that's just how it works in one day a man's life can change and you will be amazed that that day can be today that a man's life can change did you know that most things we pray for are already on earth but they are in the hands of men whoever holds what you need must love you to give you but it will take God my assignment is simple this morning for someone who has been stagnated in one position could be a family could be financially could be spiritually could be in your career your business politics and government let me tell you nothing beats the power of true favor favor and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon there are times you don't have the influence at the gate you need somebody already at the gate to speak for you you may never have the opportunity to make your demands at the gate you will depend on the favor of those who are at the gate my prayer all the time is Lord who are you about to lift may I hold the hands of that person while we rise it is powerful to discern who is the next person God is about to lift There are people who left people two minutes before they are lifting. One day before they are lifting. One year before they are lifting. May you not be like that. Oh. May God surround your life with people He is about to lift. Because you can be blessed by association. The easiest way to be blessed is through relationships. God called Abraham alone. Lord said, I'm not, you wouldn't go alone. And Lord went with him and Lot increased too when Lot left Abraham he went down too that means it was not anything he did on his own the power of association I come from the north and territorially speaking I've said it again and again that this region has a lot of um, a lot of what would I call it now? A sense of empathy. You can have people rally around you to encourage you to rise. It is not necessarily so where I come from. You can have that, that moral, that, that humane participation. But they may not have the wherewithal to lift a man. So at that point, you need favor exclusively. Because you can come out from a region where there is no basic advantage whatsoever. I am a product of what the favor of God can do. And my assignment is that for someone who truly believes, maybe may be the first and the only one even from your family, that if you can receive this grace today, I tell you the truth in the name of the Lord God of heaven, your life will be a marvel even to you. I've heard a lot of people say, but this is unfair. I'm better than this person. Unfortunately, life does not work like that. It is what is on you that governs what is around you. Esther obtained favor. Esther defended the cause of the gospel by preserving the Jews. Otherwise, there would be no Jesus, there would be no salvation, there would be no redemption. A woman, not a prophet, not a king, not a warrior. Are we ready to pray? I don't know how you are going to pray this morning, but find a way of crying to say, Oh God, at such a time as this, arise and bring favor to my life, bring favor to my career, bring favor to my destiny. Are there people who can pray here? Lift your voice and pray. Pray passionately and pray truthfully. I will give these people favor before the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye will not go empty 
Emptiness is proof of lack of favor. Pray. Pray for your children. If not for yourself. Pray for your business. Pray for your career. A woman loses favor. And in 24 hours she leaves the king's palace. Never to return again. A village girl finds favor. And within a short time she seated with royalty. Grant me favor, O God. In this season thou shall arise and have mercy. For the time to favor me. The time to favor me. Is someone praying you are in church this morning? The time to favor me. Don't say I have an uncle who likes me. Don't say I have a friend who likes me. No man can give you what God has not given you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, listen. Let me tell you this. While it is true that all blessings come through men, God must direct them to bless you. If God does not place it in the heart of any man, you can watch your needs in the heart of a man. There are people here, it is one signature that can change your life. But for decades, the barrow is in his hands, but will not shine. It takes favor. It takes more than desire. It takes more than lobbying. Just because you know A and B and C does not guarantee help. He says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. And he says, from whence cometh my help? My help, he says, comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Some may trust in horses, he says. And some may trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of God. I'd like you to pray a prayer and say, Lord, who is the next destiny helper? Cause them to show up in this season. Whether they be in Lagos. In the name that is above all names, I pray, I pray, who has been anointed in this season to be part of my success? Who has been anointed by God to be part of my growth? Who has been anointed to advocate my preservation to advocate my establishment who has been anointed to see that I remain in honor is someone praying this morning from Zion. Send help the gift of man. Send help. Send help to my career. Send help to my ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm rounding up. In Second Kings, don't turn there, chapter 5, the Bible talks about a man called Naaman. He said he was the captain of the Syrian army. And the Bible says he was a valiant man. But, but, excelling in a level, but he was leprous. And one day, one of the captives, a young slave girl, you must pray for discernment because sometimes your helpers don't look like helpers until you see what their help does. Who would have known that the destiny of a warrior was tied in a slave girl? She said, oh, that my king would hearken to me. That you would go down there is a prophet. And they sent a letter to the king. And the king said, am I God? You are looking for trouble. Elisha heard about it and he said, let Naaman come and know that there is a prophet in Israel. When he came, he told him, go and wash in the Jordan seven times. It takes humility to receive from destiny helpers because sometimes the instructions are ego stinking. He said there are many other rivers. And Elisha did not see a need to repeat himself. And the young slave girl again pleaded with him and said, I know this man. If he speaks, believe him. 
and he went and did himself. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that man was healed. You may have excelled in a level, maybe in career, but is that the best? There may be an area. And that area that is wanting is where you will need the favor of God in this season. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, give me discernment, the eyes to see, the eyes to see the people who will be used by you to lift me. Please pray. We're rounding up this morning, but you must pray. He gathered us by His Spirit to help us. the living God, Jesus, is hanging on that tree. No man has the courage to talk to Caesar to release that body because there are times that it takes influence for your voice to be amplified. And nobody, none of the disciples, they had the desire but not the influence. And then a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea went to meet the king and said, I demand, let me tell you, not every voice can open your door. Influence is powerful. Is it alright if you cry that God will send one man of true influence into your life in this season? Please lift your voice and pray. Don't reject influence. Don't fight it. You will fight it to your peril. Send men of influence, oh God, to my life and to my destiny. Send a man to my destiny that has the credibility, that has the leverage, that has the voice to advocate my lifting. Send the Joseph of Arimathea to my life. Hallelujah. Final scripture. The Bible talks to us about a very strange man in the Bible called Mephibosheth. Have you read about such a man? And the Bible says that at his birth, the midwife made a mistake. It was not his fault. But as a result of another man's mistake, someone is suffering. There are times that you are in positions that had nothing to do with you. But in any case, you are now a victim of that situation. Is there a system where God can bail such men out? The Bible says that one time that David looks at this man and falls in love with him. He says, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Were there not other people? Then they carry a wig. Ah, God, oh. They carry a weak man to the king. Do you know that deformities and imperfections are not allowed within the palace? Historically. And yet he said, this man you will not only dine with me once. I told you favor does not happen just once. He says, from today, this will be your place. You will stay here. Apostle, it's not my fault how I came. It's not my fault. The, the issue I'm in now, I didn't know anything about it. I was just working in a bank and they said some money was missing and all of us are about to leave. I know it's not your fault. But then the system requires that you also be punished. Unless favor bails you out. Can we pray? Lord, I may not have the strength on my own. But please, may someone like me enough to arise for me in this season. Please lift your voice and pray. You will be surprised at the testimonies that arise from this. Someone must be interested in your life and your situation enough.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. While standing, let me just tell you three ways to activate favor in your life. Number one is by sowing seeds of honor. You activate favor by sowing honor. You are not entitled to favor from anybody you detest, reject, or trivialize. You must have the humility to show honor is proof of wisdom. Can you adapt to the complexity of men so that you can receive the blessing that comes with them? Honor. Number two, you can pray for provoking prayers like this. You can actually pray your way into a realm of favor. Number three, the third way to activate favor is by receiving what I call the Esther anointing. There is a grace that comes and that through prophecy. One scripture and I pray for you and I'm on my seat. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. Please never forget this scripture. It's a scripture the Lord showed me and it changed my life. Please read with me if you are a Christian. It's projected. Let's shave time. One to read. And the elders of the Jews built it. Uh -huh. And they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it. Stop there. It's one thing to build. It's another thing to prosper. It's another thing to finish. They prospered through the prophesying of two strange prophets. Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. Prophecy is powerful. He says, and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet were they preserved. He says, believe in the Lord your God. You see, unbelievers know this. They do everything they have to do. And they know there must be a spiritual advantage. And so they will resort to dark powers to cap up everything. If all your effort ends in this three-dimensional realm, you will be frustrated. There is a dimension of the prophetic that must supply stability to your life. It is true. Every time there was chaos and disarray, the prophetic came. Speak to the dry bones. Speak to the actual head that fell. Speak to it. I want to pray in one minute. And this I want you to believe. There is nothing a man can say it is given to him from God. We stand as ministers, privileged stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom. But let me admit to you with all humility that when God gives you something, you have it. It doesn't matter whether you, when you have it, you have it. If you do not have it, you do not have it. You know you have it by the results that show. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God, I stand here this morning in the presence of mighty servants of God, in the presence of captains of industry, in the presence of political veterans, in the presence of men and women who have tasted of your grace. And I stand by the privilege of your grace, according to the measure of grace you have supplied. I speak to everyone under the sound of my voice. Rise to a new level of resolve. Rise to a new level of resolve. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. I join my faith with the faith of our Father, the overseer of this great ministry. And I declare for someone here, let today be the season of your rising. For someone here, let today be the season of your restoration. For someone here, let today be the season of your lifting. In the name of Jesus, I declare any door that has refused to open, I stand by the power of prophecy. And in the name of Jesus, I speak to that door. Ephata, be opened now. Be opened now. Be opened now. And the book of remembrance was brought before King Ahasuerus. And when that book was opened, 
He said, Mordecai did this and that. What reward has been given him? Listen, there are some of you who have been good to people and they have forgotten you. I stand by the grace of God this morning and I command remembrance on your issue. I declare remembrance over your issue. In the mighty name of Jesus. When Joseph interpreted the dream of the wine pressure, he pleaded with him, when you go back, don't forget me. And he forgot him for two years. It takes God to make those you have helped to remember you. I pray for you. Whatever has made them to forget you in this season, in this season, may God cause them to remember you for good. Please hear me. Do you know that Mordecai, according to scripture, consulted with dark powers and diviners to know the exact date to kill the Jews? He didn't just strike any day. Please believe it that there are arrows that fly by day and there is a noisome pestilence. The destruction that wasted in noonday, that there are men that rise just when your blessing is coming, you come down. Zechariah chapter 1, when you read verse 18, he said, What seest thou? And he said, Four horns. He said, These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man will lift up his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters. I have come this morning as a privileged carpenter that any power sitting on anyone's destiny, in the name of the God of heaven, the God of Jeshurun, I command that they leave your destiny now. I declare finally, first for our mothers and the women in this church, and then for the members in this church, and then for all our guests and our visitors, that in the name of Jesus, whatever represents an expectation, because of our activity today, we may not have the time to minister and prophesy to people individually, and I apologize. We we'll have to honor the time and allow other activities happen. But I agree in the name of Jesus that everything that has represented your request, if it brought tears from your eyes, then you must cry again for joy. If it ever brought tears of sorrow, then I declare you will cry again for this time for joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be done. We establish it and we declare that the favor that is upon our lives now will shift us and the testimonies will prove that we received something this morning. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus a peace. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.